Welcome to session three of Complexity Explorer's Mesa tutorial. In this session, we'll, we'll set up our Google Colab instance, which will allow us all to be working off a common environment, right, and we'll initiate our classes. If you don't want to use Google Colab and use your own integrated development environment, uh, that is entirely up to you. Just please appreciate there might be some challenges uh, that should be fairly easy to resolve. Now let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is if you open up a Google page, and you will need a Google account for this, uh, such as an email, right? Just search Google Colab, and then go to their Welcome to Collaboratory uh, link, which should pull right up. We can initiate with a new notebook, right? which will then uh, which should should get a screen that looks something like this. First thing I want to do is rename it, so I can hit File, go to Rename, and I'm going to call this Mesa Tutorial. Uh, we'll use this file uh, to build our Mesa uh, with Traders model throughout the, throughout the rest of the lessons. Okay. Next up, we need to import our dependencies. So as this is a Mesa tutorial, the first thing will be to install Mesa. We use exclamation point pip install Mesa. Now the trick is Mesa is constantly under development, uh, and at some point there might be a change to how Mesa operates that could make that could cause issues with this tutorial. So if uh, there is an option to use something called pinning, where you could do pip install mesa equal equal sign, and then the version of mesa that you want to use. Right. So as an example, we use 0 0.8, which is an older version of mesa. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Google Colab will install it. Right. Uh, as it, uh, if this ever happens, I. Uh, then we'll be able to add a text box later into the videos to tell you which version of Mesa was the latest before there was a breaking change. Right. Uh, now as you can see here, once you install one, then you can change that number. The current version as of this video is 1.1, but we anticipate uh, based uh, on some changes, so we'll go to 2.0 here in the next couple months, but there shouldn't be any breaking changes for this tutorial. Right. And now as you can see here, uh, it uploads now version 1.1, right, and critically, it uninstalls a previous version that we uh, had had just installed to make sure that there's no conflicts, right. However, for the rest of the tutorial, we're just going to do uh, pip install Mesa, um, and if there's ever reason to pin to a specific version of Mesa, we will add that uh, as a text box inside the video. All right, as you can see here, uh, it's already installed. All right, so next up, after we install Mesa, Right, you could clear the output if you want by right-clicking on the output field. Now we have to import it. Okay. So now that we've installed it, we can now import it. Okay. Uh, a kind of good tip to help, make, to help the readability of your code, particularly in Colab or uh, Jupyter Lab, right, is that you can uh, add text fields uh, as headers so you can collapse uh, cells of code you don't want to see. Right. So in this case, I we use hashtag or pound pie, sign import dependencies, and then use the right arrow uh, on the upper right side of the cell to move it up to the top. You see this little arrow off to the side, right, allows you uh, to collapse those cells uh, so that they're hidden. Okay. All right. So we can now add another text field. All right. And in this case, we're going to initiate our resource classes. So there's three agent classes uh, that we use. Um, in uh, Sugarscape with Traders. The first two are resource classes, uh, which are sh um, our sugar agents and our spice agents. So to initiate these, we're going to do class sugar, right? and then uh, we're going to pass in mesa.agent with a capital A. Right? This imports mesa's agent class, or inherits mesa's agent class from what we imported uh, in a previous cell, coding cell. All right, so that's how you initiate a class in Mesa. All right, it's always good to comment so uh, your code is more readable for you or other people that look at it. And so what is sugar? Uh, sugar is uh, an agent that contains an amount of sugar. Right? And that that agent, uh, and then what it really does for each step is that it grows one unit or one amount of sugar uh, for each uh, iteration of the model, or each turn. Okay. Now that we've got our comments, we can now uh, use Mesa's initiate function or initialize in order to initialize uh, this class. 
they do death underscore underscore init underscore underscore and then per mate python syntax self right and then for this lesson we're just use a print statement to say i am sugar right? so we're going to run that uh, and if we have any syntax errors those will then show underneath the cell right and now we're going to do the same thing for spice so class spice all right uh, open parentheses mesa dot agent with a capital a right? and then we'll add uh, our comments to make our code more readable and understandable for both us and other users uh, and spice is the same as sugar, where it contains an amount of spice, and then grows one amount of spice at each turn. Okay, once we got our comments, right, now we can uh, initialize our... Uh, our spice agent the same way we initialize our sugar agent. So I use Python uh, per Python syntax of classes we def underscore underscore in it underscore underscore self uh, in parentheses. And then for this lesson, uh, we'll just do print uh, I am spice. And just to make sure our classes are initiated the way we think they are. Uh, next, we're going to add a new type of uh, class. So this is going to be our trader class. All right, so I'm going to put in a header here. Uh, this will be the longest uh, and most complex of uh, all the cells we're going to have in this model uh, due to the uh, amount of activity that our trader agents will use. All right. All right, and then, but this still initiates the same way uh, as our other resource classes. So in this case, it's going to be class, and then trader with a capital T, uh, and then mesa.agent with a capital A, because it's inheriting the agent class uh, from mesa. And then we'll put in a uh, similar commentary. So trader. Uh, has a metabolism, right? That's how much sugar and spice they process for each uh, step or each turn, right? Uh, and they harvest and trade uh, sugar and spice, right? So this is really what um, the dynamic uh, of the sugarscape with trading model, right? So that you have sugar and spice, uh, and then you have trader agents that need to use that sugar and spice to survive, uh, and they, so they then harvest and trade that sugar and spice to optimize their sugar. And then just like sugar and spice, we use uh, Python's initialize or initiate function, uh, def underscore underscore init underscore underscore self, right? And then we're going to put print, I am a trader. This is just to make sure that our code is initializing the way we think we do when we do their model, right? So now I have our three uh, tr uh, Asian classes uh, that have been built, right? So the next thing we want to do is create a model class. <clears throat> So similar uh, to the previous ones, we'll create a header and I'll call this our model class. And then for our model class, right, we initiate it the same way as the sugar spice and the trader. We put class, this we're going to call sugarscape uh, capital G1MT. This is to follow the uh, nomenclature that Rob Axtell and Josh Epstein use in their book, Growing Artificial Societies. In this case, when we initiate, uh, when we inherit from Mesa, we're going to do model with a capital M. Uh, as you can see with all our classes, we're capitalizing the name of the class to in order to identify it as a class. Right? Then we'll put our uh, commentary. Uh, so that way it's easier to read and remember what each thing does, right? And this class is a model class to manage the sugar scape with traders model. Again, this is identified in the book as G1MT. And just to be clear, the book we're using is Growing Artificial Societies by Rob Axtell and Josh Epstein uh, from 1996. Right? And at future points, we'll actually reference specific page numbers, uh, if necessary, based off the Python code we write to replicate 
uh, their model. Now that we've uh, put our notes in, we're going to initialize uh, the uh, model class the same way we initialized our uh, trader and resources class by first using the initialize uh, function uh, def underscore underscore in it. And then per Python convention, open parentheses self. And then, uh, and then now we're going to call each of our model classes. So we're going to self dot spice, right? And then uh, equal spice. Remember capital letter for uh, capital S for spice, right? And then the function to say we want to initiate that class. Right? Then we're going to call uh, self dot sugar, right? And that's going to equal an instance of our sugar class, right? So capital S, right? With open close parentheses, right? and then the same uh, with trader. Right, self dot trader capital T for trader, to and then parentheses to initiate our trader class. Right, okay. we now have uh, our model class set up where we initiate each of our subclasses, uh, our agent subclasses. Okay, so now we want to create an instance, right, of our sugar and state model. So, uh, just like we create instance of our spice sugar trader class, we create instance of our sugar scape G one M T, right. Uh, um, and so this is uh, uh, our model class calls, or our this our instance of that calls our model class, which calls our trader class, which and calls our agent classes. Now I want to see if they do what he said. But right? nothing happens. Right? Why is that? Because you got to put the function uh, call of open close parentheses, right, in order to make sure that your model gets initiated. It calls that function. And sure enough. Uh, Sugarscape GA1T initializes each of our agent classes, and then they produce uh, our, um, uh, they pr initiate each one of those, producing the print statements. Right? And then off. So, uh, once that's done, you can do a save and pin revision, because this will uh, represent the end of session three, where we've imported our dependencies and initiated each uh, of our agent classes and our model classes, and they all work together. So thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll see you for session four, in which we start to uh, add more functionality to each of our classes. Thanks for joining us.